first let's give a clap, you know, um, a hand uh, to Allah for putting this together. You know, because this is really, you know, it's a lot of work that's also very aesthetically pleasing to look at, you know, just looking around at the, you know, at the posters and, and, and just the setup. Um, but what I want to stress really uh, is that we need to follow the example of Mabati and Alaf uh, in terms of Afri African philanthropy, right? The idea being that we can't always wait for, you know, Western NGOs uh, or Western governments to come and help us with our own cultural production. That indeed, through African philanthropy, through our own sweat and blood in, in that sense, uh, that we, we can grow our own culture and drive our own cultures. Um, yeah, let me uh, allow Lizzie to say a few words as well, and let me keep switching back and forth. Uh, thank you, Simon. Um, my name is Lizzie Atri, and I'm the director of the Kane Prize for African Writing. Um, the Kane Prize expressly uh, rewards writing for short stories in the English language, and working there, I realised what an enormous gulf there is in uh, the reflection of the African experience if it's not written in an African language. Um, and when I first met Makoma, uh, at a festival in Cape Town, a book festival, we got talking about what we could do to change that and we were lucky enough to meet a sponsor at Mabati and Allah uh, through the Safar group who wanted to support our ideas. And after announcing the prize in 2014 at the Ake Book Festival in Abia Kuta, Nigeria, uh, we have achieved a great deal, I think, in two years, and I think uh, we're very excited and pleased that you could all be here to share our uh, absolute pride and pleasure in the, the way the prize has developed. We want to continue to develop the prize. We have one more year of funding, and we hope to take the prize to another African country that speaks Kiswahili. That could be Rwanda, it could be Uganda, uh, it could be uh, anywhere on the eastern coast of Africa. And one of the wonderful things about Kiswahili is that it crosses nationalities, it crosses borders, and it unites people with one language. Uh, and that's what we hope to reward with this prize. Um, you know, but earlier today we had an impromptu meeting um, uh, with uh, at Mkuki Nanyota's uh, office. You know, and one of the things that kept coming up was what role should governments play, African governments specifically, what role should they play in driving African cultural production? Right, because it's, it's, it's at some level, writers can only do so much, publishers can only do so much. Uh, in fact, even sponsorship for these sort of prizes can only do so much without governments creating uh, not only a well-read, uh, but well and well-educated and sort of a population, but one that has a, a love for uh, for the arts. Um, I, I, I don't understand why, for example, we can't have uh, a ministry of African languages, right? If we think of our ministry of uh, or within the minister, ministry of culture, you know, different ministers, ministries of culture, why we can't have an office dedicated to African languages? Because what we end up doing is uh, blaming African languages. Uh, you know, I've heard so many times we hear that, oh, why are you speaking your language? Are you, are you a tribalist? You know, like why are you speaking your language? Are you trying to create political division? Right? As opposed to seeing it, to seeing it the other way around, as opposed to seeing uh, our many languages as a blessing, as wealth. Uh, something that we can uh, that we can grow. Um, so, so, I, but I think that's a role for government to take to take it to the next level, if you will. Other is for us. Then, you know, I mean, I'm not saying what we're doing is not important, and uh, but it, but it will also be limited without uh, the help of the, the government that speaks for the people. Um, one of the roles that prizes can have is by ascribing value to the work that writers do. And instead of taking for granted um, the hard work that goes into putting a manuscript together, some of the books that have now been published as a consequence of winning the 2015 prize have been worked on for up to 20 years, I think, in Enoch Maragese's uh, case. But these things are done at the side whilst working on other projects. If we reward writers with prizes like this, which have a big purse, $5,000 is a lot of money for a writer to win in one go for an unpublished manuscript. And with that, they can use the money and spend the time developing their work and working as artists appreciated for uh, that essential work that artists, writers, thinkers, scholars, translators do. We want to encourage translation between the different languages in Africa. We're starting with Kiswahili because it's one of the most widely spoken languages, spoken by 400 million people. But we want to encourage translation between 
all the different African languages. And one of the ways of doing that is to encourage universities to have translation centers, not just for translation to European languages like English, French, German, etc., but to translate between African languages. Why are there not centers in every single country in Africa which works on translation between all the different languages? When we announced the prize in Nigeria, people said to me, where is this place, Kiswahili? And I said, uh, it's not a place, it's a language. And that gulf between West Africa and East Africa can be bridged if we're translating into Yoruba from Kiswahili, if we translate from Igbo into King Rwanda. Those are the things that we hope that we demonstrate are possible by uh, awarding a prize like this today. Good evening and welcome, Karibu Sana. Uh, Karibu New Sana. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize a little bit in the sense that uh, I cannot speak Swahili. Uh, so I have to address in English. The reason being is that I've just been about a month in Tanzania. Uh, I was earlier working in the group in a, in a Rugandan operation in Kampala. But I promised by, by next year, by this time when we are doing the next prize award, I would probably have learned Swahili as well. <laughs> um, my job is very simple. I think, I think the function is uh, it's just to say thanks to everybody who have made it here, uh, taking the time off. Some people have come from very far away places. Some people have come from Dar es Salaam. Say thanks to everybody.